anyone who's familiar with the Bible will know that there's a complicated sort of marriage between, you know, God's people and the secular state. What are you, what are your, your thoughts and, and feelings on, on that? When talking about this, there's a lot of confusion, especially for modern Catholics, especially for modern Western Catholics who are uh, kind of wrapped up in ideas of democracy, where the origin of civil authority comes from, what the nature of the state is, and what the purpose, what's the aim of it. These are things that are at the beginning of our logic in regards to our relation to the state. So it doesn't flow from us backward, right? It says, well, what it, what is the nature of it? What is the source of it? What is the authority of it? And therefore, what then is the aim of it? And what is our relation within that aim, within that structure, and how ought we to think toward it or feel toward it? And so in the West, you know, the Catholic Church has written an enormous amount of encyclicals and a lot of them pertaining to these very things. And the encyclical tradition, right? So the Pope's writing all these different things. I've, I, I, this is years old, but I, I print them out. I've got in the, in the margins, you know, stuff about universal rights, the new order of society, reconstruction. When you talk about the origins of civil power, here's some things that are said. It belongs to church jurisdiction to set forth what Catholic truth demands of everyone in politics. And this is a quote. Um, Thus making it clear by what way and means measures may be taken. So the church supposes, right? And in fact, doesn't just suppose, insists that it has competency. It has jurisdiction on it. And so they, there's never like, well, maybe we shouldn't talk about this, which is why it's so weird when people in the comments section come on my show and they're like, why are you talking about politics? Why aren't you just praying? Mm-hmm. Well, in part because they specifically say that you shouldn't do that. <laughs> like the popes have said, <laughs> you should not just do that. In fact, you need to be, you need to be rather uh, serious because these are grave matters and these concern the temporal order and the temporal order means something. The prince or the head of a state is essential that there's a hierarchy, that without this, societies dissolve. There are those who prioritize liberty greater than is just, and they contend that the state power originates with the will of the people. The church is opposed to this, okay? And Catholics affirm that the right to rule is from God. It's a natural and necessary principle. And unless this is understood and adhered to, the state will, and the statesmen who are involved, and the citizens who have a relationship with that state will fail to reach the end or aim for which it was created. But all of that, the, the purpose of this, the reason for its being, is the common good. Yes. And ultimately, for the realization of Christ's kingdom in this world. And, it, you know, and a lot of people, they, they mysticize everything to the point where it doesn't matter, the world, it's all... It's, it's, it's extraordinarily Protestant. I mean, it's like borderline Anabaptist. You know, you sit and say, that's a raging heresy, man. I mean, it, the, the popes don't talk that way. Yeah. And so that is the origin of civil power, the nature of that, that power, the nature of that authority, the source from whence rulers rule, the purpose and the aim. And then it breaks down, of course, into a lot of different areas of life. I mean, they've right. covered a bazillion. So, I mean, yeah. you could go on forever. Yeah. But that would be the overarching thing for me. Great. 